Hello, I'm Kurt Fargo with MicroTools, and today we're going to take a look at servicing the Kodak 760H carousel slide projector. First of all, let me go over some of the tools that we're going to use. We're going to use light oil, a grease gun filled with super lube, a quarter inch nut driver, number two Phillips screwdriver. Um, we got a long shafted quarter inch nut driver, a hammer for staking the link, and this is the punch for staking it in our block, and cutters for cutting out the old link. And we have slotted screwdriver and a magnetic quarter inch nut driver. Here are our tools um, that we're gonna use for this, along with the hemostats. Here is the parts now. This is a standard Kodak kit. It has the link, rivet, and your two focus gears. I have this motor to show you in a minute the difference between the motor that's in here and the standard Kodak motor. Let's go ahead and open it up. Turn it over, make sure it's unplugged for safety purposes. Also, make sure you're wearing glasses, safety glasses. Pull off the push on foot. There may be a a screw on some of them. This one's a push on. We have four screws that are in the four corners of the projector on the bottom cover. Three of them are the same. The one that is different is the one that's in the back corner by the elevating foot in the back. This is a little bit longer. Okay, now the bottom cover should come off. Let's get it out of the way. Okay, now looking at the bottom of the projector. This is the reason I've got this extra motor here. This particular projector has a Bomax motor and you can't do anything with it servicing wise. If you have the standard Kodak motor, you would end up lubing this. And you have to also be very cautious with a Kodak motor in that if when you have it plugged in and running, that all this is a live electrical, 110 volts. So you want to be extra cautious. So that's the difference, Bomax, Kodak motor. Why they use Bomax for a period of time, I don't know. But they vary from projector to projector. You can see right off the bat on this projector that we're missing a gear here and the focus motor gear is brittle. It's gonna break in your hands, come apart. So these are two gears that we're going to have to replace, one here, one here. And then our link on this projector is down in here. That's where it's at. You probably can't see it too well with the camera. But we've got to take off this area here to get to it. So let's go ahead and take off the um, cover that protects the cord storage area. Three screws for this. And then we've got the elevating foot. There's two screws for it. And these should just lift up and out of the way. This has a circuit board in it, which controls the focus motor. Because this projector does have autofocus. Not remote, but autofocus. And we'll use our long quarter inch nut driver to get the three screws to get the focus motor out of here. These are all three colored screws. They're all three of them are the exact same. Let's get it out of our way off to the side.
and grab the three screws that came out of it. Put them aside. Now this is the access cover for the solenoid and link area. These two screws actually go into the solenoid and this is an adjustment screw. So this plate goes up and down for adjusting your forward and reverse. So we'll go ahead and take off these three screws. First of all, I'm gonna do two that go actually into the solenoid. These are also collared screws, but they're a little bit different than the ones that go into the focus motor and you do not wanna mix them up. These two screws have a little less thread on them than the ones that go into the focus motor. Here's where I use the flexible shaft quarter inch nut driver to reach in and undo this guy. It's a standard screw and our plate should come out easily now. Just push down, turn it sideways a little bit, and get out of the way. So, now you can see the link in here much easier, and the solenoid. The link is down here. See if this one's even busted yet. It is the old style. Yeah, it is broken. It's falling apart. But this is the little guy here. This is your autofocus lamp. And we want to be very cautious not to bump it, because if you bump that, it makes it go out of adjustment, and... It's a whole lot more work to get it back into working order. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and take the slide that that lamp is attached to and just push it backwards and get it out of our way as much as possible. So again, it's pushed it back in. What I will do now is to get the link out of here, I will turn the solenoid sideways just a little bit. Again, being cautious not to mess with the actual focus lamp. if you watched my 850 video you saw that we did hit it and we went through the extra steps to adjust it okay so use gravity let it fall out and here we have it as you can see it's just brittle it's all falling apart and that material is much thinner than the new molded delrin versions so i'll use my cutters Cut the rivet out, stick the new link in here, nice and tight. Let me go ahead and spread it a little bit. Push it all the way down, line up the hole for our rivet. This is not a cotter pin and like some people like to think it is, but it's actually a rivet that goes in here. The rivet to the plate. Use our punch and hammer. Some people just do this with a pair of pliers. This is the right way, but there's more ways to skin the cat, as they say. Now we're ready to put the link back into the projector. What we're going to do here, there's a little groove in there. We're going to put the back side in first and then click the front part in. But first of all, we've got to get the link into the solenoid. Grab my spring hook here. Let's get the solenoid coming around to us towards the front, the opening. There we go. Again, I'm really trying to stay away from that focus lamp that's over there. And we'll push it up in this way. Going down in, into the groove. Get the back side first. And then the front side, is it in? It's in. Okay, now we just wanna stick it on the, the plate, the mounting plate. Putting the mounting plate in, we're gonna stick the first, the bottom 
adjustment screw will go in. Using my flexible shaft nut driver. Put it in. Now we're ready to actually mount the solenoid. Using my spring hook to push the solenoid to line up the holes in the back of the solenoid to the mounting plate. Don't want to use a lot of torque there because it spins it. Okay, it's in position. Now we're ready to test it. We're testing for forward and reverse. This is a screw that we have to adjust the plate up and down if it's not right. So yes, I know it's not all the way together, but we want to test it before we actually do get it all the way together. Turn it up on its side. Plug the power cord in. Again, be cautious that you don't short anything out on the motor if you got an old, older Kodak motor in there. Okay. Pushing the forward button, it should come up, go forward. It does. Pushing the reverse button, it should go up and go reverse. It's not. So what that tells us, again, I'm going to unplug it to do this adjustment, is that this plate needs to come up a little bit farther, more than likely. So I don't have it super snug. I just stick my straight slot screwdriver in there. And well, I have it snugger than I thought. I'll go ahead and loosen it up. A little bit. And then make it go a little bit higher, the plate. There we go. I moved it just ever so slightly. Grab my cord, plug it back in. Okay, forward is working fine. Reverse is now working. So is that simple of an adjustment? Go ahead and unplug it. I'm gonna snug down that adjustment screw and then we'll replace the gears. Okay, the two gears we're doing here is I call this gear next to focus motor and the focus motor gear. When doing the focus motor gear, you wanna block the back side of the shaft of the focus motor so that you're not pounding on the housing. Just press it on. Use my hammer here, tighten it down a little bit. Make sure it's on all the way, it's not yet. There we go. And a little bit of light oil on both sides of the shaft of the motor. Give it a little spin, make sure it's not bound or anything. Okay, that's good. Now the gear next to the focus motor. It's pressed on the shaft. Um, you can use like a quarter inch nut driver um, and a hammer and tap it on, but if you do, you wanna make sure you have something like this on the back side. So it'd be going like this. And then you can you can tap it on, but we have some special pliers because I do this so much. We just squeeze it on there, spin around, make sure it's on perfect. Okay, it's on. Now let's go ahead and put the focus motor in place. In here. Okay, as Tom says, let's use gravity. 
to help us put these three screws in. I'll use my hemostats to put them in place. One at a time. Again, this is a long reach quarter inch nut driver works really nice. Okay, let's go ahead and get our second screw in. Oh, I already got it there. Let's go ahead and tighten it up. And now the third screw. Making sure I have no wires pinched behind the focus motor. It's real easy to pinch them in back there. Okay, let's go ahead and put our cord storage area cover back in place, making sure the wires are dressed properly. Okay, and the leveling foot. And let's go ahead and reinstall our screws. Two screws on the sides of the leveling foot. And we had three screws for the cord storage cover. Okay, it's back together mostly now. Let's go ahead and push our wires down and out of the way of the gears here. And we'll go ahead and service it. This is where I use a super lube. You're gonna to wanna to get into one of the, one slot on this bushing here is perfect for sticking the nozzle down in and when you stick it in here and you squeeze, see grease come out of all the sides. We have the same type of bushing over here in the fan. And if you notice that I was moving the other bushing around by with my finger on this fan. Okay, it's coming out the other sides. Okay. We need to now service the cam stack. So we got ge grease is going to go in each one of these grooves. Again, this is super lube. And then down here is a clutch spring. We put a little bit of grease in here with a clutch spring where it goes down into the clutch area. And we'll put some grease on the big gear here. Now we'll plug it in and see what it does. Okay, we, our focus lamp is working, so we didn't uh, hit that. Let me go ahead and grab my target slide and range slide. These are the two slides you use for adjusting the focus. This is your target slide. You stick it in and you want the focus light to be right here. And then this is a target slide. It's two-sided, so we wanna make sure that it'll go all the way one direction, flip it over, make sure it'll still focus in the other direction. So, first of all, put our tar target slide in. Okay, you can see in there where the target is showing up on the slide. And another thing we check is where does this dot line up? 
this dot is lined up right here in this groove so that is perfect setting if it wasn't here you could use loosen up this screw here and move the cell housing back and forth to adjust it so now we'll go ahead and use our range slides because you know the focus is working the target is right range slide one direction it works stick it into the other direction the focus motor goes and stops so that's what we're looking for is that it, the focus motor goes and stops this one is perfect first time out of the box okay that's working great now we'll get our air compressor and blow out any of the extra garbage and pieces of plastic Go ahead and turn the lamp on make sure the lamp's working lamp's working too so this projector is ready to be externally cleaned and the cover put on so grab the cover over the front leveling foot then back down we have our four screws and the foot remember that the one longer screw is back here here's our longer screw put on and now we've got a projector that just needs to be externally cleaned now we'll go ahead and test the projectors functions with a slide tray on there go ahead and turn it on using our 80 carousel tray uh, the 140 trays can cause problems I don't recommend using them I recommend throwing them away always use an 80 tray place it on there go forward make sure the slides are dropping in I can hear the autofocus moving around. And if you have a tray that's full of just all the same exact slides, you may not hear it focusing. But these are all a mixture of slides for test purposes. And it's forward and reverse, just fine. Go ahead and turn it off, clean it up, and this one will be done. Thank you very much for watching. Look forward to sharing more projector stories with you.